How far from the target are we if we consider all of the actuals to date, plus what we are still expecting? Do we hit a target or not? A very common question that we have to answer in a Power BI report. And we could do that with a visual like this or like this, much nicer. And it just requires a few formatting tricks to get there. Let me show you how to do it. The visual that we're going to build shows how far are we from fulfilling all of the expected orders, our target, if we consider the orders that we have shipped, the orders that we're still processing, plus the orders that we have received so far. That's a very common pattern that you find in all different kinds of areas. For example, in finance, how much cash do we have already collected versus accounts receivable, plus maybe work in process. Do we hit a target or not? Now we could go for a visual like this, but I will show you how to make it look like this in just a few steps. Now the chart type that we need here is a line and stack column chart because we want to draw these horizontal lines for the target and the actuals. Okay, now once you have that, then we want to create a little bit of extra space here on the right hand side as well as on the left hand side because we need to show these labels and these labels take quite a bit of space. Now to do that, we're gonna use a small trick. We're going to add an extra table by going to modeling, new table, and we can call this table x-axis or whatever you like. And here we generate a series from one to five. That's it. Then let's go over here to the table and take that value column and drag it onto the x-axis. Now, what happens is that we basically see the same stacked column five times. Now, that is not exactly what I have in mind because I only want to see it, well, let's say over here where we have the number two on the x-axis. Now, to do that, we are just going to drag and drop all of our order fields onto the tooltip section. And once you have that, you go over here to the column y-axis and then add a visual calculation. And let's call this one shipped column is equal to, and we can use an if function, and we want to check if the value is equal to two. And only then we want to return the shipped orders. Otherwise, we just want to blank. And we do that for all four buckets of items that we have. Okay, so let me just repeat this a few times. And once you have done it for all of your buckets, well, here the actual shipped, processing, received, and the target deviation, then it looks like this. You see, we have now space on the right-hand side as well as on the left-hand side. Now, the next thing that I want to do is draw these horizontal lines from left to right. Now, for that, we have the line y-axis. Now, let's go over here and add data, add another visual calculation. And here, I just want to have the order shipped. So, I'm going to have shipped line is equal to and here we have shipped orders. That's it. Now for the next one, we just have to watch out a little bit because here the lines are not stacked like the columns are. And therefore for the processing orders line, so processing line, there we want to take the ship line and we want to add the processing orders, just like this. And so we always take the previous bucket, plus the new one on top. Now, let me do that also for the other two. And now we have the horizontal lines. Now let's go back to the report, open the formatting pane, and I don't really want to have the legend. We're going to fix that in a different way later. Then also the labels, we don't need for all of the lines. So I'm gonna go over here to data labels, and for all of the line series, I'm going to turn it off. So let's do that for all of them. And then for those middle lines, it's up to you if you want to keep them and maybe later on also add some labels to them or remove them. Now for simplicity, I'm just going to hide them for the time being. So let's go here to lines and then for the processing line, I want to turn that one off. Receive line, let's turn that one off as well so that we only keep the upper one and the lower one. Perfect. All right. Now, we are slowly getting there. So you see how we created the space. You see how we got these horizontal lines. Now the next step is to, well, now we can clean it up a little bit, right? So the X axis, we don't need to show anymore. And also here, the vertical axis, we're going to solve that in a different way. So I'm gonna go over here to the X axis, turn the values and title off. And then here for the Y axis, let's also turn that one off. Now at this point, we can then also change the colors. So let's do that also quickly. So for the shipped column, I'm gonna go for dark blue. Then for the processing column, I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. And then for the receive column, 
We can go again a little bit lighter. And then for the target column, let's make that one gray and add a little bit of transparency. Okay, good. Then for the lines themselves, let's make those black. So our lines, then we have the target line. I want to show it. Width of two, that's okay. And let's make it black. And then for the ship line, we also choose black. And there we maybe want to have a different style. So let's go for dashed. Now I think that already starts to look good, but now we have to add these labels there. Okay, how do we get those in? Well, these are just labels to the two lines that we show underneath the line, okay? So we have full flexibility also where we show these lines, right? So this is just one way in which you could do it. So here we can go to data labels, all right? We are going to select the target line first, that's the upper one. And now I want to position it under that line, okay? Now let's close it. Then we go here to value, and here we have to say, what value do we show on that line? Now, over here, I already created a measure that I will show you in a second, which is then the target label. Choose the font size, choose the color. Let's just make it black or maybe a dark gray. And if it doesn't show, just make sure that you also click on turning it on. Okay, and there you go, there it is. Okay, now that's the first one. Then we basically can do the same thing for the lower one. Only there, you see, I divided it into two parts because there I have a value section and a detail section, which is nice because then you can also use conditional formatting, for example, on the number that you show next to the line. So let's do that quickly as well. I'm gonna select over here the ship line. Okay, I wanna turn it on, options, position, um, under, and then we go again to value, and then here we have a label measure. Okay, so that is the, the, this one. And then we can go over here to detail. And there I have another label measure with the details. Now you see that looks a little bit weird. The formatting seems to be off for the value, but that is just because of display units. There I still have to set it to none because that is set already over the measure itself. Now let me actually show you these label measures. So. Over here, you see we have, first of all, the target label, nothing special. I'm just saying, oh, if the X value is four, okay, then I want to return my actual target. And you see, I'm just wrapping my measure inside of a format function and say how I want it to be formatted. That's it. And basically I've done the same thing for the shipped line label. If the selected value is four on the X axis, then the measure and same for the detail. All right, that's it. Now there's also still conditional formatting uh, that you could apply with a measure like this. Uh, so if it's bigger than one green, otherwise red. Uh, so I'm gonna apply that also quickly here to the value. Uh, let's click okay. And you can play around with the formatting, make it bold or not, that's up to you. And now there's only one more thing to do. And that is those labels that you see on the left-hand side of the column. And you might think we can also solve that with well, normal labels. Well, yes and no. You can only have one label per line. And now for these lines, we have already used the label, right? We have the value and the detail, and they show there where the x-axis is for. But I need the next labels on the left-hand side. Now, for that, we can use reference lines. All right, now let me show you how it works. Let's go here to the formatting options, reference lines, and then here we can add three lines because I want to have three labels, receive, processing, and ship. All right, so I'm going to click three times. Then here, choose the types. Now, these are going to be y-axis lines. So let's switch over here the types to y-axis, constant lines for all of them. And then here we have to rename them. And this is also going to be the name as it will show on the chart, so it's important. So over here we have shipped. Then we have processing. And then the last one, that's going to be received. Now let's first click on the shipped one and then go a little bit down. Here you see we have an FX button where we can set the value of that line. Now that is going to be equal to shipped orders. Okay, now you see that line already is there in the right position. However, it doesn't show the series name yet. For that, we need to add the data label to the reference line. I want this label to be on the left hand side, that's okay. Here the vertical position, well, we can show it underneath that line. And here, I don't wanna show the data value, but the name, shit. Okay, now the line itself, 
we don't necessarily need. We could use it, uh, so uh, you can play around with that also a little bit. But in this case, I probably would just put the transparency to 100% or the width to zero uh, so that we don't see it and we just keep the label. All right, and now we have to just repeat it two more times for processing and receive. So I'm going to go over here to the next one that is processing. Click on the X button, etc. Now, let me do that quickly. All right, now there you go. Now we have also the labels on the left hand side of the columns for each bucket. Perfect. Now, make sure that when you click on the FX button, you set the values of the other two buckets that you set equal to the processing line values and where we have the stacked amount. All right, now we could stop here. However, maybe as a last final trick, we can also connect these two lines the target line and the actual ship line. Now, let me show you how. Here we can just go two arrow bars, all right? Then for either the target line or ship line, doesn't really matter, let's go for the target line, enable it, and then here we have upper bound and lower bound. Now, I'm going to first add the upper bound. Now, I created here an arrow bar top measure, and I'll show you in a second, and another one for the bottom. And boom, there you go, we have a line. And then, of course, we can format that line to so we can uh, go for normal black. We can get rid of the markers if we don't want to, etc. Now, here you could again draw a line in the middle, put your label right next to it, whatever you want. You can get creative here. Now, let me show you also that arrow bar measure that I just used. You see, now I use the same trick as before. If the selected value on the x-axis is 5, so if we are here, then we want to have the shipped orders. Now, why didn't I do this one over a visual calculation? Because we cannot use visual calculations yet for error bars. It's pity, uh, so we still need normal meshes for that. Okay, now, this is it. This is our end result. Let me know. Do you like it? Put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know. At least I hope that you got some new tips and tricks from this too. Well, create something amazing from just normal native visuals. Now, if you like this video, then you definitely check out these two uh, videos over here. If you wanna build reports together with me from beginning to end, learn all of my tips and tricks and see how I actually create reports for all of my consulting clients, then check out my upcoming design training over here. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.